Hey, can we carry on with story time? Do you remember where we were? I remember I just come into town. Ah, uh, I was uh, I was still pretty tall back then, less hunched than I've become over time. And uh, I I I just come in to get some some spell components, and that's that's where I met you in the apothecary. Yes, I remember that. You didn't seem to have any understanding of how a shop worked. Well, I I saw a person in there, and I. I just assumed I should ask if they could help. Yes, and gave up as soon as they couldn't. Quite sweet thinking back. Oh, do you remember the man? Dwarf, ridiculous. In a pile of books bigger than he was. I thought he was rather sweet, you know, stuck in his little pile of books. Give him the money, he was very trusting. Perhaps to you. Oh, you just get grumpy with everyone. Well, everyone seems to get grumpy with me. Can't fathom it. It's because he's so moody. Anyway, I think you bought a book, isn't that right? Yes, a map of the area. Completely useless. And then I headed out to be completely ignored by you later. I don't take orders, and it sounded a bit instructional when you shouted hold at us. At that point, I just met uh, the little fella the, with the the panned, the uh, tongue. Yeah, the tongue. That was it. Little monk. Little monk. Creative name. Aye, aye. And um, and um, I I was helping him find his way. Oh, after he'd just been pointed in the direction of the castle by that elven woman from the bar. There you go. It's that direction, but it zigzags a bit. Good luck. Well. I mean, I never quite understood the whole pan on the head thing. It's strange, but anyway, we made it up to that castle and met that weird, uh, oh, William Moore fella. Lord Moore, apparently. Apparently. Uh, I invited us to go and have a wander around his catacombs. Yes, it was a relief to get inside. At least everything dead there still had a bit of interest to it. First time I saw you talking to a tree. Well, you know, <sighs> trees, they, they need love too. And I'm a big fan of trees. So, you know, sometimes give them a bit of comfort in words. Yes, but perhaps warn people before you start speaking to them. Well, that doesn't sound right. <sighs> You're silly. Hi, I'm Becky Tootill. I will be playing as Enough, a tiefling wizard, and I've never played D&D or created a podcast before, so I've got some friends to help me. Hi, I'm Jane Eris Magnet. I will be playing Trees, who is a furbolg druid. Um, I'm going to be starting at level 3, Chaotic Good. Hi, I'm Germs, uh, Latonk, a halfling monk, short for a halfling, I think, uh, two foot nine. Has a cooking pot over his head from a previous encounter. And I've got my friend Nick to the Emperor's. It's my first experience actually with 5th um, edition. Um, after pushing open the doors into the estate, you are able to see inside. Um, it's just as weird on the inside as it is on the out. Um, enough looking around. It's like how you imagine a child would have decorated an estate like it's it's just kind of nice ish or sometimes not even nice at all things just sitting in places re- almost nonsensically um there's just a chair like in the middle of the receiving hall and there's a rug laid out that doesn't like make it all the way to the stairs or the door um yeah, for the most part it's mostly sparse with the occasional decoration a uh, large painting of fruit sits on one wall. Despite that, William seems happy enough to guide you through the uh, halls, um, each kind of more bizarrely decorated than the last. Eventually, he leads you to a like kitchen and leading you towards a cellar. Uh, opening the cellar door, you see a long path downwards, torch lit about halfway through, descending further and further down into the darkness. You do notice that there's a lot of claw marks and blood on the wall. Uh, can I roll perception to see what might have caused this? Yeah. 
19. How, what, what kind of creatures is Trees familiar fighting? Mostly woodland creatures. Okay. Not necessarily fighting, but she is familiar with sort of beastly creatures that you would find in forests. So it seems to line up with what William was telling you. The claw marks, which are on the walls, ceiling, and stairs, definitely look like they belong to animals. You're not sure what kind. You're not sure how. The claw marks are the size and width that a bear would be, but you don't see how a bear could fit in this small, confined space. Enough's just going to reach out her claws onto Mm -hmm. the wall to compare them roughly in size against an infernal. Yours are bigger. That's reassuring. I can accompany you partly into the catacombs, but unfortunately, as I said, the keep must have a guardian. Understandable. She's going to turn to us and give her a questioning look. Let's head off then. The three of you trudge down the stairway, bracing the walls. Do any of you have a torch? Uh, we should all have them in our default packs. Um, I have dark vision. Okay. So will you... Who, what's what's the marching order? Who will be walking first? Would it be fair to say that I'd go first being able to actually mm-hmm. see? Latonk in the middle, so that he's got two sets of footsteps to keep track of? Makes sense. Okay. Do you want William to accompany you? Not particularly anyone else. All right. I guess we can work it out from here, William. Um, with that, he kind of bows, and the three of you will descend to the depths. The journey downwards is, again, really not that difficult, other than its steepness, which is mitigated by the availability of the walls to brace yourself. It's a simple, quiet walk down. You're not sure what caused the commotion up towards the top, but it doesn't seem to be active right now. Uh, as you descend further and further downwards, um, you get the sense that you're traveling into the cliffside. Air, I mean, I'll have to specify this for the tongue. The air is much cooler, almost as if there's like an oasis somewhere around here, which is unusual for the catacombs. Further and further down, eventually come to a level floor. The three of you stepping out of the doorway to find a long, expansive hall on both sides The walls covered in decorations of various kinds. You definitely recognize it as catacombs. Caskets, coffins, urns, portraits, various different um, offerings being left. Um, The ones closest you notice are paintings of human nobility. Uh, Enough you recognize them as the the last lord and lady of the uh, keep. Looks pretty dead in here. Enough's not going to acknowledge that, okay. and she's just going to reach up to a necklace, hold it, and bow her head for a second. Okay. Can I do a little investigate? Sure. What are you looking for? Um, any signs of these creatures of the night that had previously been mentioned? Okay. 22. Nice. You see a lot more of these scratch marks. Again, you're not, you don't work with stone all that much, so your investigation is a little more limited. But Mm. there's a lot of evidence here. Looking around, you can tell that it seems that the portraits of the prior lord and lady of the house seem to be a staging ground of some kind. Lots of corpses of human-monster hybrids litter the ground, although they seem to have decayed very rapidly. You can't tell what quite they were. Um, There's lots of blood, claw marks, but... These portraits and the offerings around them appear to have been maintained. Is there a sort of direction that I can tell where anything seems to go, or is it all focused on those that spot? Um, it seems like the majority of the action previously had been focused on this spot, but the tracks come from further ahead in the catacombs. It looks like something's gone that way. Are we going to go after it or avoid I mean, isn't that way we here? We're supposed to be going after it. I do show why we're here. Option three. I could send an unseen servant. How big, based on the echo, would we estimate these catacombs to be? They said they went under the town. I mean, you might not find it in uh, in whatever range you've got there, darling. Provided you don't mind walking a little more slowly. It's possibly the best scout one could ask for. Sure, i got ten minutes. So she summoned that and direct it to walk far ahead. 
but to come back and give them a tap if it sees any signs of life. Okay. Ooh, uh, Unseen Servant can hold things, right? Yes. Can I give it one of my torches to carry ahead of us? Would it be fairer to give it mine? Up to you. I don't want to tell you how to use your inventory. I'm never going to need a torch, so I'm just going to take one, light it from yours, and hand it off, and just watch it bob down the corridor. So yeah, that that takes only the time that it takes enough to summon using the ritual spell. The now shapeless blob merrily picks up the torch when given and kind of saunters. Uh, it, it definitely looks happy. It's happy to exist. I thought it was unseen. Well, now you've given it... Um, it's got a jaunty bob. Yeah. <laughs> you've given it a torch. Okay, jaunty bob, the unseen servant. It yeah. has a job. It's just... <laughs> it's, it's happy. It's like Mr. Meeseeks. In that it's given a task, and then when it completes its task, it gets to go and do a thing. So if so it doesn't it complete its task, it's in incredible pain. Yay. No. It gets to go... <laughs> so it's not like Mr. Meeseeks. No. Is it going to turn on us if it can't do what it's asked? You could try. That would be pretty cruel to give it a purpose and then actively prevent your creation from trying to fulfill its purpose. So... We're just going to follow Jaunty Bob down the hallways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jaunty Bob, the hero we need. <laughs> As the three of you follow, you hear distant skittering, which seems to draw closer. Your unseen servant merrily pressing forward as you continue to follow behind it. Coming to a, a fork, I guess it would still be a fork, an intersection uh, of halls. The little Bob stops. I'm going to call it Bob. Bob stops, kind of (laughs) rotates on the spot, as if waiting for instruction on which way it should go. So you can continue to press forward or go to the left or the right. Um, I guess I need to make a perception check to see if I can tell what the best route is. 18? Um, So you feel like pressing forward to kind of figure out, get a sense of the limits of this path would be best. It seems like straight ahead's the best way to go. Very well. So as the as Bob like turns and obediently starts to move forward, you see something jump out of the shadows and swipe at the torch. Don't get to see. Go ahead, dice. <laughs> Is this like the, the beginning of the power traps? So out of the darkness... A, uh, a rat-like creature leaps, bearing its pearly white fangs and claws. Um, it swipes madly at the air where Bob should be. Bob has an AC of I 10. Know. And it does hit Bob. Um, Bob's only got one hit point, right? Yeah, the, the, torch disip- the torch falls to the ground and clatters, and Bob dissipates. Gnawing slightly at the torch, the creature kind of stops looks up in your direction and bears its fangs as three more creatures emerge from the shadows to match it. Are they all rats? They're they're like rat hybrid like things. Like corrupted rats? Yes. Uh, okay. um, enough's going to draw her staff and make sure she's in front of the other two and just reach a hand forward. Is, is this one you ask us for initiative? Or? This is. So that's just a 20, yeah? Yes. Plus six. Okay. So that lead rat is going to charge, and it will be charging at enough of your character sheet. Well, never mind. I don't need to pull the... Enough, the the creature darts forward rapidly and tries to snap at your ankles. Using your tail, you kind of bat it away before it gets the opportunity to even sink its... It lands, skitters on its feet, and then kind of hisses so then it will be Latonk's turn it's been a while since i've played with somebody with blind fight um so we're gonna we're gonna do some fast and loose rules for your combat Latonk, i'd like you to make a perception check so that's pretty good you know that there are three creatures about 20 feet from you around where bob was and you know that there's one a lot closer 
because of your high roll, you can accurately place that one uh, about a five foot step from you. Uh, I'm going to attack the mist rat thing. Okay. Um, with, with your fists? Yeah, with my fists. Go ahead and roll. What do I roll? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, combat, you roll a d20. Yep. Um, for accuracy? Uh, six. <laughs> okay. So, unfortunately, the tonk that is not enough to hit. I'm going to say that you're you're a little eager to, to get into the righting the wrongdoing. So, you kind of do a, a slide tackle in an attempt to just boot this little rat in the face, but you misjudge the distance and you fall just short. Okay. But you quickly scramble to your feet and take a step backwards so that it doesn't get the chance to bite at you. Uh, enough. Okay. So you're saying I've knocked one to the floor mm-hmm. with my tail, yeah? I'm going to try and grab it up by the scruff of the neck and put a shocking grasp, a 1d8, into the back of okay. its neck. So you will So you want me to roll uh, for No, AC? for shocking grasp, that's a touch attack. So roll it. No AC. I don't know. It's a 1d8 spell, but do I add my intelligence to it since that's what I cast spells uh, with? No. It's flat damage. Okay, four. Nice. So, taking advantage uh, enough, you see Latonk try and do a six slide tackle. You feel confident that that probably would have been cool if he kicked it. He did not. <laughs> uh, so, you kind of give your, he- your head a little shake and uh, take a step forward to grasp the creature, uh, sending shockwaves of energy through your fingertips. Uh, the creature rears back. Its fur definitely singed and uh, squirms out of your grasp to kind of half-hiss at you again. It whips you with its tail. It's not nearly as a... <laughs> uh, the other three are going to attempt to close the gap. And let's say this first one is going to try and bite at trees. What's your armor class? Uh, 14. Okay, so this one's going to manage to bite you. Rude. And deal <laughs> two damage. Going for the ankles. The weak point of any massively tall creature. Uh, another uh, the another rat is gonna try and follow up on Latonk. What is your armor ca- class, Latonk? Uh, Fifty. Also gonna hit for a nice one. It uh, creature as you're scrambling to your feet, one of the little um, rats comes and gives you like a, a tackle, sending you back onto your back. Uh, you scramble to your feet, but the wind has been knocked out of you a little bit. You take one damage, and then okay. enough. What's your armor class enough? Ten. My lord. Uh, so as you shock and grasp that one, one of the other rats decides to kind of take advantage of your distracted nature and sneak a bite at your ankle. Um, your boot is mostly enough to absorb the impact, but it does sting, so you're going to take one point of damage as well. Okay. Which brings us to trees. Um, right. I have... Um, what's it called? I wrote it all down into a nice little easy to digest thing, and it's too big. Okay, I'm going to use Speech of the Woods to try and communicate with them. Okay. What's going on here, then? Um, I can get sort of basic understanding of, of what they're trying to say. They can relay things through, and that doesn't make them any more friendly to me. Okay. They hiss back at you, like, mentally, and they say, He gives us life. He gives us light. Who is that, then? The big rat. Could we talk to the big rat? No, your food. What? So why are you attacking us then? I'm hungry. Your food. I, I've got some food if you'd like some. No. I don't think we're going to get on. <laughs> your food dead. You live. Need live food. No, I definitely don't think we're going to get on. Uh, listen, I'm sorry about this. I'm going to use my bonus action okay. to cast Shillelagh. Uh, which turns my quarterstaff into a magical weapon, and I it hit uh, my hit dice becomes d8 rather than d6. So that's d20 plus strength plus three. Okay, four. <laughs> <laughs> so taking a quick action to bless your quarterstaff, you decide to smack at the rat, uh, realizing your intent is to not surrender to its ratty prowess. <laughs> uh, it quickly scrambles out of the way. Bugger. Uh, yeah. 
So we're going to go back to that that shocked rat named, named Pikachu. Pikachu is not enjoying being shocked. He's going to attempt to bite the shocker and succeed and do another one point of damage. So as you kind of try and bat at that one that's got its teeth right now sunk into your boot, um, Pikachu is going to jump up at you enough and kind of bite at your cuirass. Again, it's not really enough to do any kind of long-term damage, but it does deal one point. doesn't feel nice. Okay. Yes, Latonk, it is now uh, your turn. Okay, out of character clarification or something, uh, attack rolls, you add uh, the strength You of... have a base attack bonus, so let's see. That's correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to try twatting the nearest rat. Okay. <laughs> ah, seven. So, yeah, th- this rat, you take a, a slap at it, hoping to impart your speed into some power. Uh, but unfortunately, this rat is just a little too quick. Ducks out of the way. Now it is enough's turn. Right. Thunderwave is an evocation, and since I've taken that skull, I can sculpt spells. It lets me choose not to hit one plus the spell's level of creatures of my choosing. So okay. not hitting the two I'm bothered for. Okay. Thunderwave would give me a 15-foot cube 2d8 and a pushback of... 15 feet if it hits. Wouldn't you still be in that cube? I think it emanates from. Okay. I don't know. Nick? Yep. Okay. Um, they can take a constitution save against me for half damage and no pushback. Okay. So do I roll to see if it hits or no. do I just... So enough taking a quick assessment of the situation. You decide it's time to bring out the big guns and do a quick chant. Sending out a shockwave emanating from you. Your shape spell allows the field to move past Latonk and trees unharmed, leaving only the raddies to be hit. Nice. None of them succeed. So go ahead and roll damage and I'll apply it evenly to all of them. Yeah. So they get a damage of 6 each and a pushback of 15 feet? Yes. So Pikachu, ironically enough, gets blasted back and hits the wall with a squeak, um, slumping from the shock. The other three are pushed back in both directions. There's now two behind trees and one in front of enough. They're definitely stunned. They're going to resume their assault, Um, but this time all focusing on enough, as they can see. Oh, that's a one. So one of the uh, rats is severely disoriented, kind of rushes hazily at enough and makes a jump. Badly misjudges the jump and slams itself into a wall. It's going to take a point of damage. Um, Another one's going to run. Holy shit! (laughs) Alright, so another one, also heavily disoriented, runs at (laughs) enough, um, but realizes quickly that its dizziness is far too overpowering and opts to stop instead. The third one, the one in front of enough, is just filled with tiny, tiny ratty rage. And it's going to rush at enough and just bite you squarely in the arm for three damage. Well, I can't seem grateful. And so it is treat. Dice, I've had enough of this now. I'm going to just hit them with my shy leg. 18. Nice. That is a to hit. the nearest one to me. Go ahead and roll. Do. All right. So targeting that one that just slammed itself into a wall. Trees, you kind of do a run up, swinging your quarter staff. Really slam that little rat against the wall. It dies. Sorry about that. Is a little little jelly now. It is Latonk's turn. Uh, Headbutt it with your pad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to try hitting the nearest one again. Eleven. Is that good enough? It is. Oh. Headbutting it with a pan is an inspired idea. So <laughs> going after that one that's just kind of disoriented, Latonk, you decide to really give this uh, this sliding thing another shot and decide to take a quick rush at it, slide on the floor headfirst this time, and you bash right into it with the pan. Uh, So go ahead and roll for damage uh, for martial arts. Someone your size would be d4. 1d4 plus uh, plus dexterity modifier. Uh, Yeah. Now, do I have a proficiency with an armed as well? Is that thing? Uh, No. No, okay. But normally, unarmed attacks don't deal lethal damage, but as a monk, they do. Okay. 
Seven. Nice. You just splatter this one. (laughs) Having loosened it up with some thunder wave, uh, you just run roughshod right through this rat. Uh, And now it is enough's turn. By my count, there's just one little rattle left? Yes, the one that's in your arm right now. Um, Since it's already touching me, Uh I'm going to go with Shocking Grasp again. Okay. Just roll d20 to humor me. Technically, you're already touching it, so you don't need to, but... 17. Nice, yeah. Three. Nice. So, it's teeth in you. You kind of give the rat a sad little look. It knows its fate (laughs) as uh, electricity courses through your skin and up through the teeth of the rat. Fried rat. Are you from your place the soul fried rat? (laughs) There's a joke for, like, two people. I understood it. (laughs) I know you did. (laughs) Um... So we've got three dead rats and some war paint on a pan now. Cool. Enough's going to tend to them both. Are you injured? I'm fine. Oh, well, yeah, I'm fine too. Should we keep moving? The score. I'm just going to pick up the three not smushed rats by the tails as we head past them. Light snack, is it? Sorry? Light snack, is it? Light bait. All right then. Any idea what you might be catching? Hopefully, no more rats. She's just going to coil her tail quietly back around her leg where she got bit. Do you want me to bring Bob back? Might be handy. How's that torch doing? Hopefully not too severely nibbled. Nick, on a scale of torch to toothpick? Oh, um, I didn't realise that was a question to me. No, the torch is fine. Okay. Totally workable. So, Bob in front of us, three rats with us, and are we happy going in the order we were before? Yeah. The light is... Bobbing along happily in the grasp of Bob. Hey, Jaunty Bob. Long time, still no see, to be honest. (laughs) Moving forward, you kind of get the sense that creatures are definitely what William was referring to, although you don't know if they're what was sending people back. Um, Do you want to take a look at the rats? Well, since I've got them anyway, they might as well get... And would it be investigation or animal? Uh, they're dead, so you can't handle them. Fourteen. Nice. The rats look, like, wild. They're bigger than you'd expect, but they're not notably bigger. They're not Latonk-sized. I'd say they're, like, they're they're large for rats. Their claws are quite long. You'd gather feral, and teeth are sharpened. Um, but other than that, you're not quite sure what these are. Um, they're not natural, but they're not quite beasts either. So after looking one over, Nuss just going to smile to herself a little bit and toss one over to trees. Hungry? I don't eat meat. Oh, I want to know if you caught it or if it just sort of fell down your front. <laughs> um, I, I will have tried to catch it. I assume that like you didn't fastball it at tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a silly little chuck since you yeah, mentioned like it. Like a lob. Something about fried rat. Do you want this back, then? Up to you. I hand it back. Well, thanks for showing us your rat, but you can have it back now. Uh, you could wear it like a jolly little crown. Would try and wipe. Three adventurers, not one of us has pressed a digitation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and two of you are magic users, too. It's not on my list of cantrips. Why would I have it if I grew up in a castle surrounded by, like, maids and stuff? Right, so we're we following Bob, then? Aye. All right, so the three of you continue to follow Bob continuing down the corridor so i'm trying to get clarification on unseen servant if he stays within that 60 feet of you stay there he does as he's told and exists within 60 feet of me and i think until i dispel him or he goes too far or he gets hit i don't know jim can turn the page is there a duration i think it's an hour duration is an hour yeah okay well oh yeah. for so shit it... sake jim do you know who we're following Jaunty Bob. It's Invisible Bob. It is Invisible Bob. <laughs> Hello, this Invisible Bob. Do you want me here in these catacombs carrying this torch? The weather today will be dank, possibly turning moist later on. Back to the studio. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something there. <laughs> Tune into Stone Monkey Radio on youtube.com slash silly poop monster, or just look for Maniac Janiac. It's very silly. All right, so Invisible Bob. Mm-hmm. Uh, reaches the end of this hallway, splitting off in left and right directions. The the further that you've been going into these catacombs, the more and more disheveled the surroundings have become. You can tell that corpses have been dragged out of caskets. Whether it's by animals or by pillaging prior adventurers, you're not quite clear. Are the corpses still lying on the floor, or have they just been sort of dragged out and... 
Some of them half dragged out, and those ones have been gnawed at. Most rats said they only go for living things. Apparently they will go for the dead things, the lying bastards. Or oh, it was something else. I suppose there's that. Um, do we understand that you can talk to animals, or are we just humouring the crazy lady at this point? Like, would it have been clear? <laughs> I, I, I was talking to the rats, so... You can decide whether you yes. manage to yep. determine things from that or not. Um, so I've got two. One, um, animals and plants can understand what I say. Mm-hmm. And another one is I can speak to an animal and they can understand me back. Oh, there you go. Okay. We squeaked at each other. It did not go well. Yeah, those rats said they were after lay food, not dead. They didn't want to take any of my rations. Should we have a look around and see which way we should be going? Anything different about the two forks in the road? Um, not as far as you can tell. Well, I just rolled a nat 20 plus 6 for perception, so... <laughs> what do you got? Your instincts tell you to go left. Left it is! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, as you head to the left, Latonk, you know, you can feel the air kind of cool around you. You definitely hear the drip of water, distantly. Yeah. Um, can anyone else hear it? No. It sounds like there's water down here. Nice. That that's handy, I guess. Um did anybody notice if the grounds near the keep were under marshland or if that's just going to be rain? It was swampy around the outside, but I didn't really see anything particular around the keep itself, apart from some wildflowers. My concern being is that natural drainage? Or is that a roof with far too much water above it? Suck it and see. Let's go and find out. <sighs> All right, then. Hey, Jaunty Bob, we heading off. All right. So heading forward down this hall now, after about, I'd want to say, like 100 feet of walking, you distantly pick up the sound of running water that the song told you about. You can hear, like, the crash of water on rock. But again, you're not quite sure what it is. Now you also feel the difference in temperature. It feels much cooler over here. Can we tell roughly sort of what speed the water's moving? Uh, if you'd like to make a perception check. Always. Seven. I botched. You can't, can't tell. I'll, I'll gain on that action. Uh, plus two. So seven. seven. <laughs> you also can't tell. You think it's moving fast. Watch at that. <laughs> you are now biased because of what the tonk heard, so you also think it's moving fast. Uh, can we tell which direction we should be going in? It feels like you should be going straight. Okay. You, going straight, it's definitely the... Are you sure about that? <laughs> Let's go straight, I guess. First time in my life. <laughs> going forward. <laughs> which does indeed lead you towards the water sound. That's fine. All right. So after about another 50 feet, um, the sound of the water becomes really intense, and you uncover a hole in the wall. Kind of hole. Am I less interested in the hole now I've gone straight? (laughs) (laughs) It seems to have been like some kind of burst. There's debris on the floor, um, bricks and stuff, but there's also like claw and scratch marks all over. Can we see anything through it? Uh, yeah. Do you want to peer through it? Could, could we send Invisible Bob through it? Yeah, do you yeah, want to? Yeah, I'm not first if I do it after. Well, I mean, yeah, the rats attacked him. Yeah, what's the point in getting hurt when we've got a, a torch? Yeah, putting my head through it seems very I vulnerable. Mean, out of all the heads we could put through it, yours is probably the best. <laughs> yeah, stuff will just ping off it, it's fine. Yeah, if we're a thunk, we'll assume there's a problem. So yeah, if we send Invisible Bob... Yeah, so Invisible Bob kind of scrambles into the hole, and then comes out on the other side. But then it just kind of stands there. Um, Invisible Bob can relay stuff back to their owner, so... To my knowledge, it can't talk. I don't know. Can follow instructions, so if I tell it to come and give me a bump if it thinks that there's danger in there... Okay, One yeah. One bump it, for it, yes, it, two bumps for no. <laughs> it comes back and bumps you. You can tell because the torch comes with it. Okay, so that's a danger bump from a torch. Do we ask questions first or later? 
It doesn't help that I'm squishy and the one person that it's, is, has the fair strength here is blind, mostly. I'm happy to go first. I mean, it makes sense that the trained bodyguard would okay. probably do that. Follow me. Okay. So, stepping through the hole, each of you come to a kind of cliffside ledge uh, overlooking a long chasm downwards. Um, there's a waterfall running from above you. There's light distantly above you, but again, you can't quite tell where it leads to. And you do see at the bottom, in the large pool of water, numerous alligators. Yeah, how far down are they? They're pretty far down. Okay. Well, this is becoming quite the safari. I'm assuming the alligators can't reach us. Nope. Okay, I guess we're going back. <laughs> or trying to get down there into the alligators. Do we have a route forward? Investigation. Eleven. Nice. Twenty-five with a natural. Uh, James gets an eight. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Latonk, you don't know. You you kind of just stand there and listen can provide no insight on this investigation. Trees looking around with enough peer deep into the pool down there. You notice a couple things. One, the alligators do not seem to be swimming. They seem to be just kind of resting up against the wall. And two, there seems to be something underneath the water. Bugger, I think we're going to have to go down. Is the How high is this ledge? Uh, it's about 40 feet down. And as the f- as the two of you kind of shuffle around, ca- trying to peer over the ledge, the two of the alligators take notice of you. Can I fling them around? Sure. Roll for accuracy, see if you can throw it at the right one. Would that be athletics? Uh, no, just treat it like an attack roll, because you're trying to aim at something. Nice. Mm. Roll it again for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So it's a one and a twenty. So one of the ones that catches notice of you, you kind of lock eyes with it. Wordlessly, you pick up a rat, still looking at it, and just chuck it right at it. Uh, It lands on the thing's snout. It sniffs it for a moment, kind of bats it up, and then takes a big old chomp. Okay. Would I, from this 40-foot ledge, be able to get Invisible Bob to fetch me while Uh, you could try, yeah. As you... As you sit there, though, alligators begin to stir. Um, can I use my speech of the woods again sure. to try and chat to them? What would you like to say? Uh, hello, friends. Um, do you know anything about any sort of creatures of the night down here at all? I think they're like undead. We are. Lovely to meet you. Um, so, they're undead. <laughs> What the are undead? F- crocodiles? The, the right. crocodiles. There's crocodiles here? Goth crocodiles, yes. I guess <laughs> some of the creatures of the night happen to be crocodiles. So, I've got about 50 feet of rope in my pack. I'd estimate it's about 20 feet down there. Should we go down there and start knocking some fucking heads? Has Bob managed to fetch me back whatever was floating alongside the crockies of the night down there? Yeah, so, did you, did you send Bob with the torch? No, I took the torch back. Okay, so let's see if any of the alligators saw or can sense his presence. Yep, one of them did, and they went straight for him as soon as he uh, stepped into the water. Whoa. And tail whipped him in, out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> How deep's the water? You don't know. How many crocodiles are there? There's four. Uh, and they're not for making friends? Apparently not. My witch bolt uh-huh. spell, is that going to get... Advantage since they're in water, maybe? Pretty please? Yeah. And the cliff's 40 feet, yeah? Yes. Okay. I'm going to need about 10 foot of rope to get me out of their range, but them into mine. Uh, Yeah, I'm, I have 10 darts on me, and I'm kind of wondering if I can just sit at the top of this thing and just blindly throw down. Yeah, I'll, I'll say your range is a little different because you're shooting down with a, mm. a thrown weapon. Okay. So I'll, I'll give it to you. The standard range is sixty, uh, twenty to sixty trees. Can you can you clarify? Are they going to kill us if we go down there? Say you're not down there. Um, how would you feel with maybe a visit? No. If we were to just pop down and say hello. No. Ah, uh, they're not keen on the idea. Would rats help? Would you like some more of them rats? No. What are you, what are you in the mood for? What sort of food are you looking for? 
Living food. It's always living food, isn't it? See, do you know what's in that uh, that thing down there, under the water? No. Okay, lovely chatting to you. Uh, they got no idea what's in there. Ah, uh, what you fancy doing? Would you be so kind as to offer them an ultimatum? We get the item, we get safe passage, and they get the rats. Or, we get the item, they get no rats, and we kill them all. I relay that to the the biteys. Okay. The biteys ponder that for a moment, and then they start climbing on the walls. Well, that was unexpected. Like spider climbing on the walls? Yeah, spider climbing. Lovely. (laughs) So you wanting initiative? Yes. Is it plus dex? It is. Eighteen. Two for me? Thirteen for me. All right, so... Incensed by your words, the gators begin to climb slowly. Trees, you are first to act. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn to enough. Uh, say, would you like a little bit of help here? Well, I assume they're not going to stop at me, so... Okay, I'm going to, uh, just touch enough shoulder and cast guidance. Uh, which means that a willing creature is granted, uh, 1d4 bonus to ability check. Of choice, the spell ends, the target can roll the die before or after making the check. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so then the Tonk's turn. Uh, I'm going to throw a, well, drop, throw, whatever, a dart, blindly. Okay. Down this chasm. So, in hopes of hitting I'm going to give... I mean, if they're clawing the way up the wall, I'm assuming that you can make pretty educated guesses to where they are. You can. Um, you're still throwing into darkness, though. What I'm going to have you do is roll a 1d100. Wow. 50. Shit. The one number that I didn't have a fucking thing for. I'm going to say you hit. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, it'll be a 50-50 thing. Uh, but then I didn't decide which end of 50. 50 dead. Which end got 50. Because I think you can technically get zero. You can get one, and then the zeros is uh, 100. Yeah. So it's technically below 50%. Well, I'll... Uh, You're such a big I'll, help, Jen. I'll allow it this time, because I could, didn't figure it out. Um, a dart... <laughs> Dart is how much damage. Oh, well, now you'll have to Only roll to hit it. Piercing. So you threw it in the right direction. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you have to roll to see if you break its armor class. And then you have to roll for damage. Right, so you want a 20 for the armor? Is that with any modifier? I'll give you dexterity. 19. 19. Nice. That's a good hit, yeah. 1d4. Although it is a finesse. Yes. So I add another 3. Nice. With some real daredevil shit. <laughs> the tonk kind of pauses, Echo locates an alligator, and just quick as a whip throws a dart right at the eye of a climbing gator. Uh, I'm going to roll a concentration check. I'm going to fail this concentration check. That gator loses its grip on the wall and falls back into the water. I'll say that was gator one. Gator two keep climbing and gets about ten feet closer. So does gator three, and then it will be enough's turn. Her eyes are going to glaze over as she reaches a staff down to point at Gator 2 to cast Witch Ball at it. I'm assuming it's within the 30 range with the climbing. It is. Okay. On a hit, a sustained arc of 1d12 per turn, concentration up to a minute. Okay. Unless they find cover. Go ahead and roll for it. Does 11 hit AC? You can add 1d4 to that if you want from the guidance. It's a ray attack, so I'm going to say you don't need to roll to hit. In that case... Actually, you do, but it's touch, so yeah. Uh, my d12 gives me 4. Okay. So you blast this alligator in the face with lightning. Yeah. It kind of roars, rears, and also falls back. Does it stay close enough that I can stay in the attack, or... No, oh. sorry. Gator 4 is going to climb, and this one is a little faster, so it's going to climb to within 10 feet of you. Now it's Tree's turn. So there is one gator that's quite close. There's two in the pool, and then one still on the wall. So the closest one is 10 feet away, yeah? Yes. On a wall in a sort of tr- immediate drop. Uh, my attack range is 5 feet, so I am going to offer guidance to uh, enough with consent. Okay, then have another guidance. I know I've got two. No, you've only got one. So I don't think it stacks. It does not. Okay. I'm very confused. Um, if you've already got yours, then I will I will offer it to... Uh... Yeah, I'll take that system. There you go, enjoy. All right. Um, has one climbed onto the ledge we're on, then? Not yet. Not yet. I'm going to throw another dart. This at the one that's furthest away. So there's one on uh, one climbing up 10 feet away. There's another climbing up. 
And there's two in the pool below. Okay, I'm going to throw a dart at the one that's climbing up. Okay. Roll a d100. 71. Okay, and then a d d20 to hit. Yeah, plus... Four. Okay, roll a d20 again for me. <laughs> nice. So, you go t- to throw the dart. Roll a d4 for me. Four. <laughs> Um, you go to throw the dart, but it slips out of your grip as you, you know, rear back to kind of throw it down. Jane and, um, Becky pick evens or odds between the... I'm quite odd. Uh, the dart flies backwards and hits trees in the shoulder. Bloody hell. Could you be a bit more careful with them things? Bad luck. So the gators in the pool below are just kind of gonna right themselves and then snap angrily. Um, they're going to crawl out of the water, but they don't get back up on the walls. Uh, the third one is going to continue to rush. Uh, the third one is going to rush and make it to the ledge, crowding you. I guess we'd better do some credits then. I'm Becky Tootehill, and I can be found as Curiosity Epidemic on Twitter, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And if you wanted to see the character sheets for anybody that we're playing as, then they can be found on curiosityepidemic.wordpress.com. Gems didn't want to record any credits, but you can have these two. I am Jane Eris Magnet. I can be found on Twitter and YouTube as Maniac Janiac. I can be found on SoundCloud as Jane Eris Magnet, where I do a comedy podcast uh, talking about various bits of interesting media and music and stuff, games we've played, and lots of silly skits. Uh, that's Queer and Pleasant Strangers that I do with Laura Kate Dale. Also on StoneMonkeyRadio.blog, where I write reviews. And I can be found every Thursday, UK time, around 1930 hours at, over on Twitch.tv. TV slash Janiac, where I'll be playing something with the help of my sexy potato squad, my wonderful streaming community. Hi, this is Nick, uh, the dungeon master for the game, and you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and stream at the Nick Flair. And if you'd like to read some media analysis and self reflections that I'm writing, uh, you can follow my blog at storieswithnick.blog. Thanks for listening.